Good afternoon and um, welcome back and uh, welcome if it's your first webinar with us today. Um, we are living in the most incredulous, exceptional time and um, clearly we've got uh, some urgent things that we must attend to together. We're here to help you and assist you in responding in terms of what you can do and uh, assisting you in terms of accessing the uh, support that's uh, critical and available to you to navigate these really uh, challenging waters that, uh, that we face this storm. So today we're going to address uh, cash flow. We're going to look at financial tactics. We're going to give you the update as of uh, Friday evening based on the Chancellor's uh, announcements and the details that have been coming through over the weekend and, it, and in fact this morning. And um, so for those of you who are, uh, who've rejoined us, this will be a fuller version. Now we're getting more and more information from the, uh, uh, from the Chancellor and, and from the institutions, the British business banks that are providing critical information in terms of how to access this. You're gonna need this information and our support over the next 12 weeks, particularly uh, and beyond as we really seek to come out of this economic storm that we're all facing together. Now, just a couple of things. You may be uh, feeling overwhelmed, deeply distressed. However, in this period, it's absolutely vital that we adopt a resilient and proactive mindset in order to get, keep the momentum to come through this uh, challenging time. It is a finite crisis, that's for sure. And you, together with us, and you know, quoting uh, Warren Buffett, you know, we will endeavor with you to enable you to stay in the game so that we can pass through this um, momentous uh, occasion. But the mindset is key. Our positive mindset is absolutely crucial. And although it's a difficult and unclear time, it's important to remind ourselves there is good news out there. And this slide, I just, we pulled this slide together from information that's available just to, uh, uh, encourage us that although it seems dark and difficult at the moment as we're in a effective uh, lockdown mode the reality is China's coming out of it they, they're dissembling uh, one of their coronas, uh, coronavirus hospitals because there's not enough cases to justify keeping them. India uh, although it's going to lockdown and curfew today um, they're making uh, very positive strides on the uh, uh, on the medical side, Holland with the Erasmus Medical Center um, claims to have found an antibody against uh, coronavirus. And you know, this 103 year old grandmother in Wuhan who made a full recovery after being treated for six days in China. Good, some good news indeed. And the other points here. Italy obviously is going to be very distressing. The experts are saying that is because of the aging population. And as we all know, um, the UK and London um, under the, the Prime Minister's uh, leadership we are going into lockdown as well to try and stem and see this virus off. But we now need to battle for our businesses in this difficult time and uh, we're here to help you do that. Now today John Skinner uh, our, our London partner is going to brief you on the pragmatic things to do and give you the technical updates but remember your broader team, your account managers, the rest of the acuity team, we are all here to help you. In fact, we're all, everyone's working from home. We're fully mobilized in our Sussex office, our London office, our Chandigarh office. We're fully operational. We're here, uh, we're live with you now. And um, we are very keen uh, to, to be, uh, uh, to hold your hands, work this through with you and give you the tools necessary to come out the other side. So. Without further ado, John, tell us the good. Tell us the good news. The good news, good. Great, thanks, Stuart. So, uh, so you know, myself and 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 other client-facing teams, you know, we've been inundated by questions from you and, and cries for for help over the last weekend, over well, last week and over the weekend. And there's some. Um, there's a theme to these conversations that are happening, and it's it's mostly John. I can't sleep at night. 
Um, I don't know what's happened with my cash flow. I've lost control. And John, how do we get hold of the government uh, subsidies, the government grants, et cetera, that I'm hearing about in the news? So we're going to spend the time now focusing on these two things. So the cash control for, for business in, in, in crisis and taking a closer look, including the, the updates from, from Rishi on Friday about what, what we've got access to as um, small business owners. So any conversation that, that I'm having or we're having with clients about, about cash in a crisis always starts with this message that you've got to be immediately proactive and you have to take action now to take control of your cash flow. And, and nine times out of 10, um, uh, this means building or helping you dust off and rebuild a cash flow management tool. Now, what, what this is, is it's a cash flow forecast, usually covering a period of 13 weeks or one quarter so that we've got one VAT payment and one rent payment in, in it. And we're mapping out the expected receipts from your clients, all your expected uh, expenses, rent, VAT, um, payroll, etc. And then mapping out what this does to your, your bank balance over this period of time. Okay. Now, we're accountants, we're experts in spreadsheets, we love our spreadsheets, um, so we use Excel generally to, to build these, and we just finished off over the weekend um, a cash flow tool that we're going to, to send out to, to everyone here and across our client base free of charge, and we're going to organize another uh, webinar run by uh, one of my colleagues, uh, Ravi Purohit, to talk through how to use that, that cash flow tool. Um, now, uh, we don't all like spreadsheets. Um, there are software alternatives to this. We've had mixed successes with uh, a, a platform called Float and one called uh, Fluidly. Um, both uh, these uh, modern cloud-based tools that connect into your, your account systems like Xero and et cetera. Um, so I recommend having a Google and having a look at those as well. Um, but whether you use, you use spreadsheets or you use uh, software packages, the goal of creating a cash flow tool and why, why you need to create one is that it gives you the ability to create some future visibility. And in that future visibility, you can create uh, many different what-if scenarios. You know, what if uh, my largest client pays two months late? What if we get a 30% downfall uh, in, in customer demand? Um, what happens if I pay my VAT payment now? Can I meet my payroll payment um, the week after? Okay. So the outcome of creating this visibility, it gives you the chance to share your, your, your problem, the burden of the problem with, with us or with other people in your business, and then to make a plan to define what funding you're going to need when you're going to need that funding and, and and quite importantly as we always emphasize to to our clients it gives you time to go out and find it, it gives you time to create a, a solution to the funding uh, problem now the, the outcome of this is is always it builds confidence now this this spreadsheet this one single spreadsheet can help you sleep at night and we hear that time and time again just the act of getting the information down into uh, a piece of software a spreadsheet and making a plan for the future uh, goes a long way to to giving you confidence and helping you sleep at night so once you've you've created your shiny new cash flow tool You've, you've mapped out your what if strategies over the next quarter. It's time to get uh, tactical and take immediate action to keep cash in your business. So to preserve cash in your business now. So just looking at three, three key areas. So firstly, starting with the most uncertain part of your cash flow, your income. Um, you need to be very proactive of taking action immediately. So pick up the phone to your clients um, today. Phone your largest clients in particular and work on strengthening that relationship with them, ask them how the business is, talk to them about their ability to make that payment before it's due. You know, we're in a, um, a hugely emotive and stressful time and your, your um, clients are gonna be making very emotive decisions about who to pay and when to pay and, and strengthening that relationship that you've got with them will go a long way to increasing the probability that you're gonna be further up um, that list of payments they're gonna to make today. Think about introducing technology. For those of you using uh, modern accounting packages like Xero and other uh, cloud type platforms, uh, within 30 minutes you can set up um, features on there to have your invoices paid by credit card. So you can send your invoice out and your clients can, through pressing buttons on that, that, that invoice on their email, they can pay you by credit card and it takes moments to set up. 
do your homework, identify the risky customers in your client base. Do you serve pubs? Do you serve uh, airlines? Um, create plans to specifically deal with those sorts of clients. Can you get payments up front? Can you create shorter payment cycles? And where you do have payment problems, you know, I, I always recommend that you look to create informal uh, payment plans for your clients before trying to push down the demand for any statutory route. 99.99% you, you, of the time that you'll get more money back from a, a bad debtor through creating a payment plan yourself than trying to, to try and use some sort of insolvency or enforcement action. So you prioritise your suppliers next. Um, now, please do not give in to the temptation to uh, just pay those who shout the loudest or indeed whose credit control teams the most organized and, and better at following up. You need to take time to, to uh, be clear on who your business critical suppliers in your business are today. So which suppliers are keeping you in business, allowing you to serve your clients. Um, talk to your um, client base, you know, you're going to, that's where your, your, um, your supplier base, you're going to have to make some uh, bold and emotive decisions yourself on who you need to pay. So please communicate with your clients about your, your, your suppliers, about your intentions. If you're going to miss a payment, talk to them, create a plan, put an informal payment plan in place with them. Now, the, the, the third area, we've had lots of uh, questions coming in about this, you know, the three big expense lines in your business, your, your, your wages, so paying your staff, uh, paying your landlords, so getting your rent paid, and, and, and meeting tax obligations. So we're going to spend a bit of time just looking at these, these specifically now. So your, your, your wages, your staff. Now the, the SME or this, the general business owners amongst us know that your, your staff, your teams, that that's the most valuable asset in your business. And rebuilding teams after having to cut or reduce teams is a hugely expensive and painful process to go through. So as business leaders, we should be looking at ways to retain talent wherever possible in our business. Um, Alternative strategies could include using unpaid leave, so volunteered unpaid leave by your teams. You could reduce pay across part or all of your, your business. Um, you could use some creative shift working techniques, so reducing hours, protection of roles, sharing a role between people. So someone picks up a, a role Monday to Wednesday, someone else picks up the same role Wednesday to, to Saturday. Um, but it goes without saying that if you are going to to bring out such drastic measures of your teams, you need to bring them along with you. So communicate early and communicate compassionately. Um, they're in particular going to want to know, understand what's going to happen with my, my pay, my remuneration after this all goes back to, to normal. So be clear on that sort of timetable. I think you're just coming in there, John. It's really important that uh, when we're looking at costs, most businesses' big cost is the team, their payroll, their staff. And so the immediate uh, gut reaction is, I need to stop that. And of course, that can be incredibly damaging. And so the government, it's, um, the, the Chancellor's new initiative, should really give us a big encouragement. So I would just echo what John's been saying. Take your team with you. Tell them that uh, you know, life will continue. We will pass through this. And... Um, but with uh, creative measures and teamwork, um, then um, we will uh, we'll push through. But definitely should be the last, uh, last light to be switched off is your team, because most businesses without their teams cannot continue to trade in any event. Absolutely. We must always remember that, not just think of, it, think of our team as a cost, but they're absolutely essential to the vitality of a business. Yeah, absolutely. So, so Stuart's alluding uh, there to uh, the big announcement from from Rishi on Friday, um, this coronavirus job um, retention scheme, which is just unprecedented in certainly fiscal stimulus history of um, the the Western world. Um, so just just prior to just touching on that, because we just need to jump into it and get some details clear um, to emphasise this point I've made around uh, following HR guidance thoroughly. So just because we're in a uh, time of crisis, it doesn't mean that HR law now will not apply. And um, so please uh, reach out to your HR advisors or ask us to help connect you to them to get anything that you do, making sure you're doing in line with HMRC legis HR legislation and, and, and rules within your business. So 
Coronavirus job retention scheme. So this is a, a, a piece of legislation rolled out by Rishi on, on Friday and we're learning more about it today that seeks to um, protect and protect jobs and stop businesses having to make redundancies. Um, the way that this is going to work, so the, the government are saying they're going to cover 80% of the wage costs of an individual. It's got a cap at two and a half grand a month for a particular type of uh, worker, a furloughed worker. So to be really clear here, a furloughed worker is not someone who is currently continuing to work in the business, um, either full time or indeed what we understand now in a reduced hours capacity. This is an employee who has now been told to uh, temporarily be absent from work. So if you're closing down an office or, or perhaps you're closing down a cafe and teams now are not required to continue, they will likely be classed as furloughed workers. Okay. Um, the scheme is going to be run and administered by HMRC. Um, we understand a new portal is going to appear uh, in the coming weeks and we'll distribute links and as soon as we find and we can test that ourselves, but we'll try to give instructions on how to use it. But it appears you're going to have to access this portal. You're going to have to, to provide information about the employees that you, change, you, that you are changing their status from full-time or, or part-time workers to furloughed workers. And you'll need to provide information about their, their pay and et cetera. And after completing that portal, it appears that HMRC then do the administration in the background to ensure that you can get your payments coming through. Now, the payments are going to be covered from 1st of March. So anyone that you, you had to, to uh, cut their job and make them absent from work um, since uh, the beginning of the month will, will be covered. It's not clear yet when the first payments will start to make their way from HMRC to businesses. We expect, given the pressure being put on the government at the moment, that this will happen in the next few weeks. But uh, it could be as late as um, end of April. So it may be in time to meet April payrolls. And at the moment, this is just here to cover a quarter. Um, it, it, there's no sign at the moment it will cover longer than that, but I expect it might continue depending on how deep the crisis um, gets. So Rosie, we've got a few questions coming on that. Yes, just one question um, being asked by Jonathan Rodwell. Will this cover key contractors in a business? Hi, Jonathan. Um, at the moment, this is actually the, 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 one of the biggest areas of contention uh, and what you've seen in the media of the, the weekend, that zero hour and self-employed type workers, so contractors um, and the like, are not covered by the scheme as it is written today. Um, reason being is that it's you know, clearly to, to roll out the, uh, from the government's perspective, as I can understand, to roll out the scheme as quick as possible, um, that the employees with a pay slip, it's easier to understand what they've been paid and what to cover it. Um, we expect to get information later today and the signals that perhaps in um, uh, Rishi's and Boris's statement this afternoon, we'll learn more what we're going to do about contractors and zero hours, but they're not covered by this presently. John, one, one more question. Yep. Um, Jordan Addison has asked, does this apply to part-time workers or just full-time? So at the moment, if they're part time and they've got a, a salary, so as a set so they're earning, it looks like they will be covered if they're on a zero hour contract and there's no basis of which they are paid if they're no longer working in the business. It appears at the moment that they're not going to be covered by this. But I, I'd certainly expect there to be an update on that today and tomorrow. Over the weekend, there was huge pressure on the government to answer questions on this as that covers uh, perhaps a, a million people in our population. Okay, that's all for now. Thank you, Jordan. Okay. So um, we've paid our wages. We've 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 got our, our our government cover for our furloughed workers. Now we need to pay our, our our rent to our landlords. Now the big message here is don't miss a rent payment to a landlord without talking to them first. And it goes across all your supply chain, but particularly for your landlords. You know you've got a particularly uh, uh, um, technical lease often in place of your landlord and you need to make sure you don't breach that you enter conversations with them before you decide to, to change anything to do with what you pay them so um, be bold step up reach out to your landlord there's a lot of landlords I think on this call today and, and um, they've, they'll have uh, multiple properties with many tenants wanting to get hold of them so get in there early um, don't wait till later in the week um, things that your landlord uh, may want to talk to you about and you can offer your landlord a rent free periods rent discounts perhaps rolling up rent over a period of time but please reach out um, and talk to them um, first now um, we're going to 
look at this more closely in a few moments um, about the, the rates holiday, but many of you on the call who are high street based, you're going to get a 12 month um, rates holiday. Um, but if you're not part of that, um, I strongly suspect that if you reach out to your local council and let them know that you're going to, to need time to meet your rates payments, they're, they're going to give you a payment plan. Um, now, Rosie, have we got any questions on this at the moment? I know we've got a number of landlords here. Not specifically on that, um, but on the previous slides okay. you were covering. Go on then, let's, yes, let's jump on so, one now. Um, yeah. Jordan Addison again is asking, Hello, um, will it be based on PAYE? The, the... Yes, yeah, so it's for PAYE staff only. So those that are in a PAYE scheme and have a salary on that scheme, that's at the moment the employees that be covered. So if you're a PAYE in zero hours, at the moment it's not clear how they'll be covered. Okay, and a question, last question from Gavin Howard. Are all workers paid 80% or is it up to 80%? Uh, the wording at the moment is to cover 80% precisely, so the wording up to has not been used. Um, but remember, there is a cap of two and a half grand a month. So if you've got more highly paid individuals uh, in your workforce, um, they won't be paid more than two and a half grand. And you will be expected to meet the, the second 20% um, of it. Okay, that's all. Okay, okay great. Okay, so um, tax liability is the, the, the other really big one. Now, um, uh, HMRC generally are, even before this crisis, they're quite open to working businesses that work with them to deal with um, uh, tax liabilities they can't pay. So just to run through some quick um, tactics and techniques here. So um, first of all, so always file your returns on time. Never try to um, hide a liability by not filing. That tends to not work well with HMRC and you rack up fines and penalties and interest alike. Um, you need to reach out quickly to HMRC to talk about the liability that you don't think that you can make or if you haven't been able to make it. Or you can talk to, to us, your, your partners, your client managers that generally um, that work with you day to day. Now, when talking to HMRC about any liabilities that you can't pay, they're generally looking for a few things from you. Now, firstly, you'll need to be demonstrating that you're doing something so to ensure this doesn't happen again. So you're, you're raising money, you're managing cash in a new way. And secondly, you'll need to demonstrate to them that you still are a solvent business. So that we still, you know, continue trading, business is looking good in the future. If we just get through this, then we'll be able to, to, to continue going. Um, it's also worthwhile noting that you tend to get better deals of HMRC if you can pay some money up front. So you tend to get longer um, term deals of maybe six months if you're able to pay perhaps 10% of the liability up front. Now, um, we've already seen out in the government literature um, being circulated that HMRC are being encouraged by um, the government to uh, be very lenient on people that have um, COVID-19 issues and that's why they, they can't meet their liabilities. So I suspect HMRC are going to be particularly lenient in this time and so we should be pushing to try and get these 12-month type arrangements. Um, and then more importantly, uh, the government formalised um, uh, uh, a, a uh, liability deferral such as VAT on Friday so so the the message is is that all VAT liabilities for the next quarter um, will be deferred until the next quarter and it's worth worth noting here this is a VAT deferral at the moment not um, a, a VAT write-off so I think the interesting thing that, that I can see happening from this is that businesses are being told you don't have to pay your VAT now, but next quarter you'll still be accruing obviously your current VAT liability and then you'll have the previous VAT liability to pay. So I suspect um, we'll get updates on either that continuing or maybe even a write-off later, um, but no doubt we'll still be into reaching out to HMRC to, to get longer terms on that. Okay. And I think, you know, we've just um, heard from uh, Ben, ben Stanbrook echoing that, saying that uh, he's found uh, the HMRC to be incredibly lenient. So yeah. please don't panic. We will come through this together. Mm -hmm. And uh, HMRC and the government are going to be very, very cooperative and supportive of good businesses. And we know our clients are running good businesses. So yeah. let's yeah. take a look. Yeah, so just, just, like, just like Ben has, is, you know, reach out to HMRC and have a conversation. They're going to be very lenient at the moment. And actually, it's, it's worth emphasising as well, don't, um, not being able to meet a VAT liability doesn't mean that you've just um, hit the point to pay it and you can't pay it. It means you're forecasting to not be able to pay it as well. So, for example, do not pay that VAT liability today if you think you're not going to be able to pay wages next week. 
Okay, so the HMRC liabilities are very much junior to any liability that you should be paying to your staff or indeed your landlords at the moment. Okay, that's our. And message. I think I'll just echo that. I think if you're in any doubt, cash preservation is key. Definitely bounce questions off your account manager. That's what we're here for. Um, you know, we're not quite sure how long this period will uh, will take, but if we had a three six month time horizon and we could manage through that, then God willing, we will be in uh, we'll be coming out of um, hopefully this uh, uh, dark tunnel. So ask for help. We're here to help you. Uh, and if you just want to use as a sounding board, please do so. Okay, so. Um... We've talked about the, the, the coronavirus wage protection scheme. Let's talk about the other three now big schemes the government are giving us access to. So there's the loans, guaranteed loans by the government, which we now know a bit more about. Um, looking at the rates holiday in, in a little bit more detail and these grants um, that we're getting a lot of questions in about the grants as well. So starting with uh, the Corona Business Interruption Loan Scheme, so there have been a few updates over the weekend. So the uh, the largest loans you can get hold of are still uh, five million quid. Um, the business, the size of business, is now increased from 41 to 45 million. I still think that make that covers most people in the room here, so it doesn't really impact us. Um, the a really neat one is that the interest-free period has increased from six months now. To 12 months. This is unprecedented. And, uh, you know, I suspect this might creep forward even further, um, depending on how deep the, the crisis gets. Um, remember that these loans that you can access are not just going to be term loans, not just 12 months loans at a particular interest rate. This is overdrafts, invoice finance and asset finance um, as well. Um, remember that the business, uh, the business, business, the British Business Bank is administrating um, this scheme, but it will be your local high street banks and the specialist lenders like Hitachi Finance and and uh, the like that do invoice and asset financing that will be distributing this money. So it's not the British Business Bank doing this. It will be the high street banks that are distributing um, this cash. Um, we'll look a bit more in a few moments about making your applications. Now, one little update since Friday, which is a nice to see happening. So Friday we talked about if you had received R&D tax credits or SCIS or EIS funding over the last 200, uh, over 200 K over the last two years, you might be excluded from this. That's now um, just fallen away out of the documentation. So it looks like uh, they've, they've removed that as a requirement. Um, the loans are now live today. So if you'd see the news today, um, the, the media are, are, are all over at the moment is that you can now approach your banks today to try and receive these loans. Um, there are going to be big queues, obviously, and there is a high demand for it. So get in early. Um, now, uh, advice on approaching these these loans. So what is very clear is that the bank is still assessing these as normal commercial loans. So this is not uh, a grant, it certainly isn't a grant, and it certainly isn't uh, being assessed on a lighter basis um, than normal. So you need to get ready for making a normal loan application as the business um, normally would. So some advice here, um, you need to build your cash flow. So that cash flow tool we're talking about where you're identifying what you need and when you need it, um, it's, it's vital you get that together so you can demonstrate to your, your bank um, what you need and when you need Need it. You're going to need to create um, your own COVID, not COVID, COVID-19 um, narrative around how um, you've been impacted by the crisis. You know, the, the government has reiterated that this is funding uh, to be made available to those businesses um, that are impacted by the crisis, not those businesses that are not impacted by the crisis. Rosie, have you got a question? Yes, Jonathan Rodwell. Um, Hi, Jonathan. He's asking, is there a risk that banks will collapse? And if so, should, should organisations spread the risk over different providers? So, it's, a very, uh, so it, it's, very, it's obviously a probability that is non-zero of that happening, but it's very unlikely at the moment. There isn't a liquidity crisis um, at the moment, and there doesn't seem any, any sort of indication there'll be a run on the banks that we've seen um, in the past. But there, there isn't a liquidity crisis, and the government is making sure there isn't a liquidity crisis, crisis as well. I'm sure we'll see new monetary policy talks about in the coming, coming days, but the Bank of England, I think, be, being set rages to, to print money. We're seeing the Bank of England are buying up debt off of um, commercial markets as well so I don't think there's going to be a big issue um, with uh, banks collapsing. And just one more um, John, uh, yeah. Graham Hills is saying that he's spoken with his bank the co-op bank and they have no information on the loan. Okay so um, the, what, we'll, what we'll do because we, we've um, uh, 
I'm not sure off the top of my head whether co-op are part of the accredited lenders and we have a full list in a document that uh, we've got ready to circulate today. So this document is part of a, um, uh, a set of updates about all the things the government are doing and we've got a document as well also covering a checklist of everything you've got to do to get ready for the loans and they're being ready to circulate this afternoon. Um, but uh, so the, the, the message we actually had from the British uh, Business Bank today um, was that uh, you should try and make an online application first. So um, if you bank with the co-op bank, I'd start looking at the online port and what you can do there. Um, but you might uh, find that uh, over the next 24 hours as your local branch managers or indeed the banks themselves at, at a, a core level are learning about what they can and can't classify in this, um, there'll be changes to, to how you can make that application. Okay. Um, and I'm just, uh, just picking up a couple of points. And if your bank um, is not part of that uh, approved lenders, uh, panel and they're not going to be distributing funds then um, let's have a conversation with us and we'll see we'll see how we can help introduce you yeah it's, it's good good point Stuart so we've got um, very good connections across uh, a large range of all sorts of different lenders from from banks and asset lenders and uh, invoice finance um, providers and all the rest so please talk to us if you're unsure about how or what sort of financing you should begin how you how you um, uh, pitch for that financing as such Okay, so um, Rosie, John, can you manage another question? Let's go. Okay, um, this is from Mark Breen. So it's back to the point of this 80% salary. So he's asking if you reduce an employee's salary, mm -hmm. will the government still cover 80% of that? Or do you need to keep them on full salary, but not have them working? Okay, hi Mark. Um, it, from the information we've got at the moment, you actually have to be classified as a fully furloughed worker. Okay, so you need to be um, uh, not working the business. So if they're working working the business on a reduced salary and continue to work, it doesn't look like they'll be covered. Now, if they're being told to be furloughed and you're reducing their salary um, at that point, then perhaps the reduced salary is covered 80-20, but there may not be um, any sort of reason to actually reduce the salary if government are going to, to cover 80% of it at that point if they're furloughed. But they, they can't continue to work in the business from what we understand at the moment. Okay. Great. Right, let's just finish off um, everything to do with this loan now. So um, our recommendation is that you, 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 you start taking, if you're going to need to access these loans, you start taking action today to, to build up your, your narrative on how you're impacted by um, the crisis and um, to have your cash flow ready, um, to get your due diligence folder ready. So we're always talking to clients. It's one of the main things that's, that delays loans um, being ready to, to, to be dispersed. So get your management accounts ready, get your KYC docs ready, get your stat accounts and all those sorts of things. Um, we also noted that in the government literature, they said reach out to your bank and ask for repayment holidays. Okay, so they're clearly talking to the bank leaders and the rest, and, and they're, they're, they're leaning on them to, to allow this with their lenders. And this is probably one for the landlords on the call to take note of as well. So while um, you may not be able to access some of uh, the loan scheme and a lot of the, 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 the um, measures the government are putting out are focused on SME business owners, not really landlords. Um, landlords, you should be reaching out to your lenders and um, talking to them about repayment payment holidays and the rest on um, on loans that you have outstanding, particularly if your tenants are coming to you to ask for full repayment holidays. You know, that's a good basis to go back to your bank to say back to back, we need a repayment holiday our side. All right, just a few points that was fresh off the press this morning. So I've mentioned it already. So uh, the British Business Bank has said, please try applying online first. And clearly this is a measure to do with what we actually talked about last week uh, around um, the banks are not gearing up with any more staff at the moment to deal with uh, from, what, from what we can see and understand to deal with an increase in volume. So clearly applying for online mechanisms is being uh, encouraged. Um, the scheme's only going to be open for six months, say only, but it's, it's, it, you won't be able to apply for the loans after six months okay so if you're forecasting you're going to need um, the overdraft in, in, in six months time because perhaps that project that was meant to start in six months time has now been cancelled delayed for a year because of the crisis you need to be looking to get that um, funding line in place now not in six months time um, two really really key points here now um, if you are applying to borrow more than 250k you're going to have to demonstrate to the lender that you cannot provide security in the normal way um, for uh, the loan being offered. 
Okay, so if the business does um, have significant valuable assets from the business, you know, valuable debt, book, property, what have you, you will be asked to secure your loan against those prior to using the government scheme. And lastly, one that I, I think is really important, I've had lots of questions coming in on this, being, do I need to provide a personal guarantee for this, this loan? And the answer seems to be, yes, you, you, you probably will be if it's unsecured. And your personal, government, your personal guarantee sits behind uh, the, the, the government guarantee, not in front of it. I, if if your, your loan becomes delinquent, the bank will pursue your personal guarantee for the funds before the government um, guarantee will, will cover it. Okay, so you will be asked to do that and to still be um, putting um, some personal risk on the line to get these loans out. Okay. Okay, so just now moving on to the measures focused on our very weak high street at the moment. So um, uh, if you are a high street business working in retail hospitality, leisure, so cafes, um, pubs, etc, you will not be paying business rates for, for 12 months. Now, um, because I know they're, they're within our client portfolios and they should, if you might be on the call today, um, estate agents, dentists and other medical businesses, you will not be eligible for this business rates um, re reduction. You will be having to require, to, you'll be required to pay your business rates. But as I mentioned before, is that if that will be, if that's going to be difficult for your business, still reach out to your local council as I think they will be quite lenient with um, uh, payment holidays and the rest. Um, for the landlords on the call, if you had a premises that was not occupied um, prior to the crisis and it was for hospitality, leisure, etc., you will not be covered by the rates relief uh, uh, either. However, if you have a, a tenant who um, uh, goes bust during the, the crisis and you're left with the business rates bill, um, you will be covered by the looks of it. You don't need to do anything, everything will be applied to your 2020 rates bill. Okay. Another big one we've had lots of questions in, what are the grants available? And there have been a few updates over the weekend on this. And there still doesn't seem to be a great deal of information out there as well, but this is again what we do know. So now, uh, previously there was one type of 10K grant, now there are two types of 10K grants. They're just being more specific how they're targeting this now. So for small businesses that qualify for small business rates relief, you'll get a 10K grant. And this is, there's, there's no trading uh, type or requirement restriction on this. Any business that gets the small business rates relief will get access to a 10K grant. Now, the, the, the new update over the weekend is for those businesses that are in hospitality, retail, leisure, if you have a rateable value below £15,000, but you perhaps don't, but you don't qualify for the small business rates relief, you will also get a 10k grant. Okay, so that's a, that's a new grant that's been made available over the weekend. Um, then there's the 25, uh, 25k grant, again, focused on the vulnerable hospitality retail leisure um, with a rateable value between 50 and 51, you'll get access to 25,000 pounds. Now, the, the message uh, has, has now been um, uh, emboldened by the government that, the, that you don't need to do anything. Your local council is going to contact you. Now, from talking to local councils and feedback from clients and the rest, a local council still perhaps haven't had a full briefing this on this yet and all the guidance on exactly what they're meant to be doing and how they're meant to be doing it. Um, so I think you're just going to have to try and pick up the phone to your council and find out um, what they know um, and when you'll be getting hold of this cash. I suspect um, the government will, will provide some more information later this afternoon they're obviously under a lot of pressure by um, uh, pressure groups from the high street and what have you to, to find out um, how we're going to get hold of this money. Okay, um, but to, to, be, to be clear, this money is not um, uh, uh, available for landlords. This is for the businesses that operate within those premises. Okay, um, Rosie, were there any specific questions here? There's a question from Stevie O'Driscoll and he's saying, is our business for training and assessment for gas workers eligible for these? Hi, Siri. Um, it's, it's unlikely to be unless you actually qualify for the small business rates relief. So this is, this is uh, this, the grants are, are, are laser focused at the, the really vulnerable cafes and pubs and et cetera. And if you don't fall in that category, um, you won't be able to access the grants. And I'd suggest instead of looking for accessing grants, then would be talking to your banks about the, the loan facility that you could potentially get in place. And another question from Marilyn Price, does serviced accommodation fit into the leisure industry? 
it may well do and this is probably some of the detail that when we can work with you or indeed it's you talking to your council to to see if you you qualify um the so we've we've been going through the documents that the government have been issuing to local councils and they have been trying to be very specific about what falls in and what falls outside of the the, the definitions, but that we have spotted that they have put in there that um, the lists they provided are, are not comprehensive and they're uh, perhaps even leaving up to the council to some degree to decide whether someone falls in or falls out of it. Now, I suspect if the service accommodation is uh, more like um, rents or property rentals rather than a, a hotel, it might fall outside of it, but um, that's, you know, that, that, they will have to look very carefully at the detail there. For now, John. Okay, great. All right, so I think that covers off um, our main our main items from the government at the moment. So, Stuart, over to you. Yeah, I, I'm conscious there's some other questions that are, that are coming up. So, if we don't get to your specific question, then please just pick up the phone to your account manager or to John uh, or I, and we'll uh, pick those up. Obviously. Some of them are, are uh, relevant to um, uh, individual businesses as opposed to um, uh, all businesses. Okay, so the uh, next steps, John, if you can. Uh... So I think the key thing is remember um, the government, your bankers, your clients, and suppliers want you to want you to succeed, and. Um, everybody is pro a good business and we all recognize that good businesses in our um, uh, in our nation are critical to our ongoing uh, prosperity so let's take heart and um, let's face the uh, this enemy this monster that uh, is before us and we need to do this uh, proactively so we must be planning and uh, preparing for accessing this business support funding, getting ourselves ready so we can get those in. Some of you um, are, some of you can be ready quite quickly. Some of you, we need to, uh, and we're keen to assist you to, to, to get ready. There are other things coming out on the um, SSP and new measures. As you know, this is a moving landscape. It's evolving every day. And we will do a special, we'll do a, a dedicated webinar to that to help you through. The same with IR35, the changes and um, what we should do. We'll also be conducting some other webinars. All of us have uh, investments in the market and we've seen the market go through a major, major um, correction. It's not really a correction, it's a fall. And um, clearly there are opportunities here uh, and there are things to do and there are absolutely things not to do. So uh, we will be giving you um, advice on that through our uh, our Finance Conduct Authority regulated uh, business and advisors. That, of course, is um, uh, a different uh, team to our accounting team. We'll also be, uh, we're also encouraging you to think through the Wills Trust Estate and Bloodline Planning for you and your businesses, what you really need to know, uh, and measures that you, can, you should be and can be taking there. And, of course, uh, we've, we've addressed some of the landlord uh, questions, but there will be uh, a separate webinar where we will deal with the landlord advisory support um, on uh, how to manage through this precarious scenario. And of course, we've seen that um, the base rate being a, a record low of 0.1%, that's clearly going to affect mortgages. And there's a whole lot of uh, stuff coming out, three months repayment holidays and, uh, and other scenarios. But uh, thank you for your time today. We are here for you. Please speak to us. Um, and um, we look forward to briefing you on more developments, 